Oh, I'm going to take you through our Libby install. So, I'm going to just quickly show you what's going on in the roof. What we've got is 12 410 watt DMEG panels up here. I'm not going to show you what we do on the roof. I've already got that on YouTube. There's a good video on that if you want to go and see us installing the hooks and the rails. Only difference being that is Vanderbilt stuff, so we quite like the Vanderbilt. And also the other difference is with this one, every panel's getting a Tigo optimizer. So with the Tigo optimizers, uh, very important that the panels go into the short leads on the optimizers, and then these leads are what connects each panel. So Graham's just starting to build this Libby. Still got the inverter to go on the top, so that's two of your batteries, a 5 kilowatt hour and a second 5 kilowatt hour. So we have our DC cables run from roof, I will show you that route uh, outside in a little bit, but it's nice and tidy inside the garage and a conduit and it goes outside there. And we've also got a supply up here along with a cat cable, so that's 6 mil. 6 mil we use for 5 kilowatts and 4 mil for the 3.68. So at the moment, what am I up to? I'm just putting all this together. So in this one, we've got a 16 mil three core coming into the garage because we're doing a Zappi and a Libby. Uh, I'll go through the cable sizing in a little bit and I'm just putting a new consumer unit in, fuse box, uh, Libby controller, the generation meter and the isolator. Got a roof penetration there, just on the overlap of the felt. Got it all trunked up, labelled up, and then we've opted for putting our DC isolators in the attic, just at the hatch there. Just following on from that, there's your DC route coming down, 25mm conduit, which then goes into the garage there, and we've showed you the, the DC route in the garage. So it's a tight squeeze in here, but we've actually quite a lot of work to do in here. So what we've had to do is introduce a switch fuse. So in essence, that just comes after the meter. And what that's doing is supplying the distribution board or consumer unit we've fitted in the garage. We've also swapped this out for a surge protection device unit, which doesn't only cover the work we've done, but it covers the entire house. So surge protection device in there, all labelled up. Um, essentially we've got a 16mm 3 core which then runs into the utility room behind all the plinths and then it winds its way outside which we'll show you in a bit. So that steel wire armour cable comes through the wall there and the customer wanted a bit of 2x2 trunking and then we're able to actually fish it across there into the garage. So we've also ran, we've also ran three cats three cat cables with this so we need one for the CT clamp which I forgot to show you in there there's a CT clamp on the incoming cable and there's just a couple of spares so it's always a good idea to put in a couple of spare cat cables for future proofing. So we're just about finished in here there's, we've not done our testing yet that's why there's no power on so 16 mil three core comes in there um, Essentially from here, what the, why have we done 16 mil 3 core? So it seems like a big supply for all this, but it's not really. So it's a 63 amp supply we've got. So we've got a 7 kilowatt charger and a 5 kilowatt Libby, so 12 kilowatts. So if you're roughly 4 amps per kilowatt, you're the best part of 50 amps there. So there's every chance that the Libby and the car will be getting charged at the one time. So it's absolutely crucial that that cable needs to be able to withstand that and the fuse at the other side is properly sized for that cable. So we've got a 63 amp supply going here, we've got our EV circuit which goes outside and we've got our PV um, which goes to the Libby and then we've got our Libby controller still to label that up. So essentially we've got a supply from there to there. In terms of the, the cat wiring, so the cat which goes back to the CT clamp and the incoming mains, that basically comes back to here. And then we've got another one which goes to the Libby, so that plugs into the Libby, 
It's essentially got a joint on it up there, which then powers back to that. So that's how the controller knows what's going on with the Libby. So got our isolators as per normal, generation meter. Worth noting also, and it's all labelled in the other side, that the main switch fuse is essentially also a form of isolation for people working in there because the generation is in here off of that circuit therefore that switch fuse has to be used as an isolation point as well. So graham has been working on this, it's a bit of a work in progress I've actually hit a snag because we need a tee box so we, we won't be able to finish this today which is a bit of a bummer because we're not that far away. Anyway, we're just finishing off the DC testing. A um, little bit of tidying up in here. As you can see on the Libby, it's really clever where they, they hide all that. Essentially it's hinged and all the leads disappear. So, still got a little bit of AC work to come down here um, before we start commissioning it all, but it's looking good. Right, that's us all finished. So there's the my energy Libby. This is a five kilowatt Libby, ten kilowatt hour batteries. Our customer is just coming out to move that within the six hundred mil clearances. So don't worry about that. It will have the clearances. So we've got twelve solar panels up there. So some of the clever people in there will be saying, why be fitted a five kilowatt? Libby, the answer is purely because the battery charge and discharge rate is far greater on the 5. So it's worth a little more pain with the DNO applications going for the 5 kilowatt than the 3.68 even if you don't need a t even if you don't need a 5 kilowatt inverter. So got our isolator down there now and we have up there a little joint box for one of the CT clamps. Bringing you over here. This is finished now, um, so we've got our consumer unit which is doing EV, PV and Libby controller. Maybe just zoom you in on this. Earlier on today we were getting 4 kilowatts, which is not bad shooting out of a 4.9 system. And then I will just quickly show you the zap it. So basically on the Zappi, because it's obviously part of the My Energy ecosystem, this is going to mirror image what's going on in the Libby, does that through the V-Hub. So this customer here can obviously set towards um, Eco Plus, which is going to mean it will be solar car charging only. So we're big fans of the My Energy Libby, um, we've always been fans of My Energy, we love the Zappi. So it's a scalable system up to 20 kilowatt hours, so can't really beat that. Um, good charge and discharge rates. Crucially, it's going to integrate really well with your Zappi and the Eddy, the hot water diverter. So also, probably the best thing it's got going for it is the app. It's always been a good app, but now with the push of your fingers, you are prioritizing whether your solar energy is going to your Zappi car charger, your Libby batteries, or your hot water diverter. It's a good kit, comes at a big price, but it's very good kit. Hope you found this video useful. If you're interested in any of this kit, please get in touch with us. Thanks, bye bye.